No role plays, no conference calls, no BS. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on this episode, we're going to be going over part two in our four-part series, talking about the four zones of thought leadership. Uh, if you haven't listened to last Monday yet, please go back and do so. We spoke about big picture items, things like vision, strategy, and culture. On this week, we're going to be talking about the the kind of tactical plans that have to be put in place once you've considered the the big picture kind of global things. There's two types of people in any room where there's a whiteboard. There's the people who want to be there forever talking about the the big picture stuff, and there are people who want to just say, let's go do this stuff. And, and both are needed. You, you can't sit in, in the whiteboard room forever, but you can't put a plan into place until there is one. Um, so, so both are required. Um, this tactical piece is, is where a lot of people, I think, get kind of um, – you know, kind of held up a little bit because either they didn't think about the big picture first going into it and they just went right to, you know, trying to put a plan in place and hoping it works out or they have a hard time getting to this place where they're putting a plan into action because they, they're caught up in thinking about, oh my gosh, I got to think about, uh, are we forgetting something? Is there, is there more big picture things that we're not considering? It's not time to put a plan into place yet. Um, what, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, I, I like that you said that there's kind of two different people in, you know, when it comes to like a whiteboard. Um, and I believe, I believe this part of it is is the toughest part for a lot of leaders to work through because there's many times when we, we just want to kind of trust our intuition. We just want to kind of move forward. We know that we've got things that have been successful before. We know that we kind of have, a you know, an idea on kind of uh, what the planning should look like and, and how do I want to build a system to, to solve problems. But but really considering and thinking through these things is critical because, again, uh, a lot of this uh, series around thought leadership is, is very much about kind of self-reflection, considering things, um, thinking about do I have that um, and yeah, they're, they're really important. They're really, really important as you solidify the leader that you want to be. Uh, and as you really start to build in um, your own systems of working that are not just helpful for you as a leader, but as you're developing other people and other leaders, uh, it's important that you're able to speak to these things with great detail. Um, the, the, the toughest thing you can do when you're developing people uh, or other leaders is to say like, well, just do it like I do it. You know, like, like, yeah. and, but we sometimes we, we show that in our actions because we don't take the time to do things like this. If you are doing this correctly, the plan that you put in place, this kind of tactical work has to consider the, the vision and culture and strategy that you want, which are, which are a little bit more vague, but they need to be kind of North stars to you as you're creating these plans. The, the plans should be able to change over time as you encounter things that may say to you, hey, you know what, this plan needs to change. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm being vague on that intentionally because you don't know what they are yet. You, you only know mm -hmm. what they are when you get to them. But, but if the, the nature of the things that you encounter causes the plan to have to change in a way that is no longer in service of your vision, your strategy, and your culture, the, the things we discussed last week, then you either A, are not thinking correctly in terms of how to create this plan, or you have the wrong vision, strategy, and culture. You, you have ones that are not sustaining or sustainable in the environment that you're in. So so hopefully you you have a vision, a strategy, and a culture that is um, that is set up for the environment you're in and one that can be sustaining without a tremendous amount of work. Uh, it, it, it is effort and it does take work to to get this going. But if it's a good one, it should be self-sustaining. I'm, I'm talking about the, the big picture stuff of, of vision, strategy, and culture. It should kind of sustain itself if you have these other things in, in place correctly. So, so making these plans while considering the vision and strategy you have it is important, but it needs to be a plan that is that, that someone can look at on a piece of paper and know what the plan is without having to say to you, hmm, what does this mean? What does that mean? I need more clarification on this. In, in fact, if they have questions on what the vision and strategy is, being able to look at the plan should give them more information on what you mean when you talked about vision and strategy. It, it should be very clarifying to them, not something that, that drives more questions, um, you know, where they where they need you kind of there all the time explaining what they're actually supposed to do. Yeah, and I love that you talked a little bit about like the, the planning portion and kind of the flexibility needed um you know the 
I, I immediately think about plans and problem solving and why that's such an important part of, of the tactical element of this. Because mm-hmm. thinking about how, how do you build um, a, a system for your leaders where problem solving is not only like um, something that's a part of it, but it's expected. Like, like we know we're going to run sure. up against different hurdles and we have to have the ability to make an adjustment um, when needed. And and while we want to stay committed to our plans, we, we cannot fear um, moving away from them or making the adjustments in the moment. Like I think about, you know, our experience in, in, in retail and being a leader in retail for a really long time and for people that go out and shop on things like Black Fridays and, and holiday shopping um, here in the U.S. Like there's always a plan at a retailer. And it's like, all right, if people want to buy this, they go in that line. If people want to buy that, they go in that line. If people want to go buy this, they go in that line. And you make this great plan. You draw it up on a map. You have all these things that are done. And then some customer walks up and says, actually, I want to buy all three. And you're like, oh, how do I do that, right? And that that's that's kind of the idea is that you you have to have a plan, and that plan is going to work if it's if it's if you thought about it, if it's again aligned with your vision and purpose, if you've if you spent time breaking down kind of the expectations and the timelines and who's going to own what, and you build these plans out, it should be solid enough and be, and be built upon enough. Uh, different opinions that it's going to work for the most part. And then there's the thing that may cause it to have to make an adjustment or, um, you know, people might not show up for that line, but you had a bunch of resources for that line. How do you move into this other one? Like there's all these things that you kind of have to have there. But if you don't tell the team up front, if you're not building in this tactical part where it's like we're going to run into problems and when we do, here's how we go about solving them. Um, that becomes really difficult because then people freak out when the problem hits and they feel like we can't we can't deviate from the plan. Right. And you say, no, no, we, we actually can. Uh, but this is this is the steps to do that in a way that makes sense. Right. Yeah. We're sailing across the Atlantic. Sir, we've hit an iceberg. It doesn't matter. Our plan is to sail across the Atlantic. Keep going. You know, it's like, yeah, but but the boats, but the boat's sinking now. You know, it's like doesn't matter. Our plan is to sail across the Atlantic. Keep keep going. You know, I, I think when this goes wrong, it is it goes wrong when people don't feel like they have the safety to challenge the plan or they don't care enough to challenge the plan. But if you have the right culture in place, then when you encounter problems with the plan and hopefully they don't happen right away, if they're happening right away, it wasn't a good plan, right? Like these are the things that the, 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 the initial kind of goings on of the day should work fine. And then you'll encounter something that doesn't work along the, along with the plan that you put in place. And your people have to understand whose responsibility it is to react to that. And, and and if you have a plan that has a problem in three different places all at the same time and three different people who are all reacting and solving it in different ways, that can cause more problems. But if you as the leader, the only one who can react to it and solve the problem, you might not have visibility to it in time to be able to do it. And so your, your people have to feel they have the, the empowerment to solve these problems, but in a way that is methodical or that that doesn't cause more problems as they go along. And so it's really a, a it, it's not just having a plan, it's having a plan to solve the problem from a from an accountability standpoint. It, it, it's not a, what are we gonna do? It's who's gonna do it? Whose job is it to solve this problem? And so there's a point person, there's a, 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 a person you, who you go to that, that when you encounter the problem that says, okay, this is the problem that we're having. It, we can't go by the plan. This is what I think. And then you as the leader or whoever you put in, in charge of this process um, has to be able to move forward with it. And as long as the decisions they make are in spirit of the vision, strategy, and culture, not in spirit of the plan. Because remember, we're talking about they have to deviate from the plan because there's a problem. If if what they're doing is in spirit of that big picture vision, strategy, and culture that you put in place, they have to be validated for doing that, even if it's different than the way you would have done it. And, and that's where, where a lot of leaders get tripped up is they don't go that route and then they have people who going forward, they don't bother to try to fix the problem when it happens. They just go by the plan because they've they've realized that, oh, it's it, they, my leader said that it was my job to be able to solve these problems when they happen and to think outside the box and to be creative and and understand that this is our vision and the plan isn't necessarily the 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 all the time thing. Uh, but then they do something that's outside of that plan and they get chastised for it. They, they won't go outside the plan again. Uh, and so, so as a leader, your responsibility in this is to think about 
those problems that will occur, not necessarily focus so much on the plan itself, because the, the plan, once it's created, it should work in the majority of times. It's, it's how do you foster that culture that says we're going to get through these problems together, not, not be so beholden to this plan that we end up, you know, causing more problems. I want to underline that point that you said around like when, when you're going to deviate from the plan, how it really needs to be aligned with like either the values, the priority, the vision, that type of thing. Sure. And, and I think that, to, you know, an example of how do you create that space is saying things like, hey, this is the plan that we have for this event or tomorrow or whatever the case is. But let me remind you that, that you know, in retail, like it's this is all about the customer. So like if there is a an issue with the customer experience, if we feel that this is not the right thing for the customer, that we need to be open and ready to make a change. So what I'm asking you to do is to keep an eye out for that, that these things should be, you know, um, they, they should be challenged if we feel that it's not having the, the experience that we want to have. Um, and or, you know, from a value standpoint, if, if it's not, um, if we're not able to have a, uh, you know, a, a, a work environment that is, um, that, that is, while it might be busy, it might be hard, we're, we're you know, we're, if we're not having fun, if we're not there kind of like taking care of one another, then we also need to make that adjustment as well. So you kind of like lay out these ideals of like, these are the times when we're going to go challenge maybe a plan that we have and how we have to make an adjustment, N not just because like the, not because it works for this individual or not because somebody says like, well, I don't like how we're doing this. Well, like, mm -hmm. let's peel that back a little bit. Like, what do you mean you don't like it? Like, is, is it not, you know, because it's not your idea or is there something here specific to the customer experience or something that maybe is up against the values that we've established as what we want to, what, what we want to live here. So I want to underline that because I think that's a great call out for like what are the th how do you tie in the, the vision purpose into the tactical and then how do you find spaces for people to challenge a plan but being aligned with the bigger picture of what we're really trying to accomplish i think another part of this too that it, that's really important and where i see things happen that that are not in spirit of this is the, the, i think the longer an organization has been around and the more they've been doing something obviously the better they get at doing it, right? You, you you learn from your mistakes in the past, you get better at creating this tactical plan as you are doing it for a longer, longer period of time. And and things are always gonna change because the environment changes, the people change, what, what your clients or customers are demanding of you will change. Uh, but, but those don't happen overnight. They happen over a period of time and you react to it as you're going. The better an organization gets at doing this, the less likely there will be to encounter things that have to deviate from the plan. And when that happens, you you kind of lose the muscle tone of that thing. You know, it's it's like if you get to if you get to, you know, drive around in a car all day every day and then all of a sudden you're expected to walk to work, that might be your your legs are going to be sore when you get there. But a person who walks to work every day is not going to be sore after, a, you know, a few weeks of doing it. See, it's, it's the exact same thing. The the companies can kind of um hasten their own demise a little bit because they get so good at the planning that they actually don't even know what to do when it when it's a bad place it's like a it's like that line of ants you know they're so good at following that line if forever and ever and ever you put a stick in the middle and they go oh my gosh what do we do and they go crazy and they start they start going all over the place they don't know how they don't know how to solve for the problem that requires a deviation from the plan all they know how to do is work the plan and because the because at the beginning of the of the company the plan only worked seventy five percent of the time, they had to real really figure out how to get around that stick twenty five percent of the time, and it was a muscle that got worked. You've been doing something for twenty five years, and maybe the plan works ninety eight percent of the time, and you have some people who've been doing that same job for two or three years. They've never had to deviate from the plan, and now all of a sudden that, that that's a problem. And so you know, coming up with ways that that allows a plan to be, you know, kind of sturdy enough. To, to really stand on its own, but also that, that leaves enough open for people to be able to, to kind of solve problems as they come up and intentionally putting your people in places where they will have to do this, it becomes really, really important as a leader, especially new people. If you want to, you know, kind of foster a culture of, of um, you know, promoting from within and growing your next generation of leaders, the way they do that is by encountering things they've not encountered before and then trying to solve it, not encountering things they haven't encountered before and going, oh, Chris told me that I'd encounter this and this is what I'm supposed to do. No, no, no. It's, it's you, this is what the plan is. And then when they encounter something they've never encountered, 
you don't tell them, oh, this is what I did in this. Y you let them do it. And then, and it's possible they may actually come up with a way of solving that problem. that's better than anything you thought of, a or they may do it the exact same way that you've done it because that was the obvious way. It doesn't matter. It it it's that working that muscle of, okay, this has to deviate from the plan and I know how to do this. I don't need to go run to my boss to be told how to do it. I can figure this out. The, working that muscle is necessary if you're going to you know, get anybody into a, a, a position of leadership who isn't currently in one. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to this episode's One Minute Hack. But first, a few words from our sponsors. All right. For this episode's One Minute Hack, here's what I want you to do. I want you to set up kind of a framework that shows that you have empowerment of your people while also holding them accountable. So this is the kind of like the famous trust but verify statement, right? You you have to have a way that allows them to be autonomous when it comes to solving these problems that allows you to validate that what they're doing is in service of whatever that plan was, if possible, or if it has to deviate from the plan in service of the larger vision, strategy, and culture that you've put in place or that your, your company has put in place. And so this has to do with making sure that things are measurable, that there are actual results that you have said, this, this is the expectation and you can measure it. And, and if they're not meeting that, that goal, that you are able to figure out why, but also if they are meeting that goal, you still have to put yourself in places to be able to watch it happen periodically to make sure that it's happening in spirit of that larger vision, strategy, and culture, because those are really difficult to fake, um, but they are easy to discard if it becomes expedient to do so. And so if, if in spirit of the plan, the plan, the, the plan speaks to the vision, strategy, and culture, but if they have to deviate from the plan and in order to do that, they're discarding the vision, strategy, and culture, that will be very obvious to you if you're actually watching it happen. If you're not watching, if you're only looking at a scorecard or, or a result, you won't see it happen until it has become such a large part of the culture that it has changed the culture that you thought you had in place. And, and so this isn't just about looking at a scorecard or a result, though that is important. It's about making sure that you're being able to validate and verify it in a way that allows those people to have autonomy most of the time or all, almost all the time but still let you kind of say, okay, I know that they are working in spirit of something broader here, not just doing whatever they want. That's a great woman to hack. And again, we're talking about kind of like, like leadership and leadership theory and self-reflection. And as leader, what are you thinking about in these moments? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get so caught in the tactical of like, let me be clear with my expectations. Let me build a plan of here's who's going to do what and here's how they're going to go do it. Um, and, and we're really focused on producing an outcome or, or getting a specific metric to our business that we don't spend enough time maybe thinking about like how does my value structure, how does my vision weave its way through these plans and, and where, where, where do I see points where um, this – this metric or this this strategy or this plan to achieve this thing um, is driven by the values that we have, the vision that we have, and through the lens of how we want to show up for for our people, for our customers, for our community, whatever that is. And so, like, this is a good moment when you're thinking about the tactical elements here to like, wh where does my vision live in this, and and how. By, by my strategy to accomplish this goal, how am I also making sure that the vision that we have is coming to life while we do the work? Right, and if it's a vision that has been told to you, if it's your company's vision, your company strategy, your company culture that you have to adopt, you have to be bought into it. You don't necessarily need to buy into the plan all the time. The plan can be something that doesn't make sense to you from an operational standpoint, but it needs to make sense to you from a vision and culture standpoint. If it doesn't align with that, it's your job as a leader to challenge that. Uh, if you're the one putting the plan in place, it becomes much easier to make sure it's in, it's in spirit of that, of that bigger picture. Um, but if you're the one implementing somebody else's plan, if you're kind of the in, in a role where you have a boss and a boss and a boss's boss, and, and but you have to implement this plan and you weren't necessarily the one in, in charge of creating the plan, it's really important that you understand how they tie together because you will be asked by your people. And, and if it's something where you're having a hard time putting it together, they will definitely have a hard time putting it together. And, and, and they will assume that the plan is not in spirit of that larger vision, strategy, and culture, and they won't do it. Um, the, the, the values of, of your people need to align with what they're being asked to do, or they just won't do it. And so this becomes really important to you as the leader to be able to connect the two together. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time.